Welcome to the Campus Edge, a production of Butler Community College. Produced by students and for everyone, students included. Back in the studio for the last time of the semester. And that makes this another award-winning episode of the Campus Edge. Theater is a big part of life here at Butler. That's right. There are always two different plays produced every semester by the theater department. And it's always important to acknowledge the minds behind the madness. That's why I went to speak with Bob Peterson about what he does. What are we waiting for? Let's check it out. Campus Edge reporter Bailey Rogers here to give you the inside scoop about the one, the only, Bob Peterson. Uh, educational background, I have a Bachelor's of Science in Education from Emporia State University and then a Master of Arts from the same university and then I have done some postgraduate work at Texas uh, Christian University and at the University of Illinois and believe it or not, at Beverly Hills High School. I had a lot of kids uh, go on to have professional careers in theater. Uh, Scott Schwimmer did some professional acting on soap operas you know, One Life to Live and all that kind of thing, uh, had done some film work. Scott McPhail, of course, is right currently an executive at Paramount Pictures, which is a really nice gig for him. Gabe Templin is a working New York-based actor. Emily uh, Osborne, uh, she's done some television work some, uh, in terms of featured roles and Scandal and those kinds of things. Stacey Hinnon has been in Modern Family, Criminal Minds, those kinds of shows. So, uh, and also another student who's now the artistic director of a uh, theater company in San Diego, and then another young man, Jay Wallace. He is the head of the theater department in a fine arts high school in California. But besides that, we've had students go on to just be wonderful people in terms of teachers and lawyers and ministers and parents. So that's also, they're just as successful as those in Hollywood and New York. Uh, as a student, etc., I was always uh, loved Lacoste and I wore Lacoste, which is not an alligator, that's a crocodile. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if that uh, crocodile came to life? And then I thought, oh, okay, wouldn't it be interesting if it, I have to change it so it's not a crocodile, an alligator. And it came from that idea, and then the character himself came from someone I knew. He is, he's based on someone I knew, even if you're gonna do an animal. You know, Mickey Mouse has to be based in some reality, some truth, so he is based in truth. Uh, but I've based him on someone I know. Frank, the same way. Frank, his buddy, is based on someone I know, so. They are all like children. You can't name a favorite, except my favorite is always the one I am currently working on at that time. However, if I were to be judged, by one play, if it, you know, we could keep doing it continually, that is my best work as director. It was a play called Boys Play, uh, about 10 years ago. It was, it was uh, the most interesting uh, rehearsal experience I've ever had. And I had a very good friend who was a harsh critic write me and say, this is what college theater should be. Really good work. Not because of what I did, perhaps, but what the cast did. It's a really wonderful experience. But I've loved them all. I love them all. You heard it here first, folks. Bob Peterson is the real deal. I'm Campus Edge reporter Bailey Rogers. Have a good one. Continuing the tradition of success here at the Campus Edge isn't easy, but we're doing it anyway after this spot break. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me?
Talking to Bob Peterson was amazing. He entertained so many people with his work. But watching plays isn't the only way to get entertainment these days. Exactly. Whether it's movies or video games, there is something for everybody. My one problem with video games is that I have no idea where to start. Well then, we should take a look at reporter Austin Ashcraft's video game recommendations. So, summer break is coming up. That means more time for video games. However, not many people have the time to play a 100-hour RPG like Persona. So I decided to recommend some shorter games, games you can beat in a sitting or two and aren't very long, maybe five hours at the most. And to start off this list, grab your bags. We're going mountain climbing. Celeste. Celeste is a game about climbing a mountain. I should probably mention up front that this game is not that easy. The game will put you in front of a challenge and it won't move on until you solve it. However, the game has an assist mode that can help people who aren't progressing very well, and the assist mode can be turned on or off whenever the player feels like. Celeste was first made in a four-day game jam by Noel Barry and Matt Thorson. Their main goal was to make a game that was fun to speedrun. After the jam, the two decided to turn the project into a full-fledged game. The game does a great job of setting up the environment of the mountain, and the pixel graphics look amazing. Unlike most of the other speedrun focused games, Celeste tells a really compelling story dealing with depression and anxiety. And it's not overly sad either, the game has some genuinely funny moments, but the game also gets serious when it needs to, and all the characters were likable. While the game may be difficult, it tells a compelling story in such a way I don't really see in other games. Speaking of games that are rich with story, What Remains of Edith Finch while Celeste is a game meant for speedrunning, What Remains of Edith Finch is a game that anyone can play. This is because the game is more focused on telling the story of the Finch family and their unfortunate curse. I don't want to go into detail about what the curse is, but I will say it's not the happiest story. In the game, you play as Edith Finch, exploring her old family house while finding out more about the Finch family and what kind of people they were. The story seems like it's just a video game version of a storybook, but when Edith is reading the stories about her family, the game reenacts to these moments through gameplay in very interesting ways that makes each character seem more like a person. Like I said earlier, I don't want to discuss much about this game's story because the less you know, the more enjoyable of a story it is for you to go in, and the more it will make you want to cry. Now let's step away from the controllers and the mice and talk about one of my favorite games that you can play on your phone. Reigns. Yes, this game is available on other platforms, but I like to play this game on the go. In Reigns, you play as the king, and it's up to you to make people happy. The meters at the top of the screen show you how much religion, army, people, and money you have, and if any of those numbers get too low or too high, you will lose the game. And yes, these numbers can go too high. Because of this, it's up to you to balance the meters to make the kingdom the happiest. This game is all about decisions, and you make the decisions by swiping left or right on the characters with the response that you want. So it's basically Tinder, but with more death and less dating, depending on how you use Tinder. Reigns is a nice mobile game because runs don't take that long. You can easily crack one or two games during your lunch break. I would gladly recommend Reigns or any of the other games I mentioned to anybody who enjoys playing video games. I hope that one of those games piqued your interest, and if they did, let me know. I've been Austin Ashcraft with Campus Edge. Don't go away. We still have don't more go to go right here on the Campus Edge. We still have more to go right here on the Campus Edge. A redhead <gasps> staring contest. Don't go away. We still have more to go right here on the campus edge. Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. But that was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hey Bailey, what kind of music do you like to listen to? I generally listen to alternative rock or old rock music. That makes sense, but where do you go listen to your music? 
I usually listen to it in my car on my way to class. Not like that. I'm talking about what streaming services. Oh, Spotify, of course. I haven't used Pandora much recently. I personally like to use Pandora, but there's an argument for both platforms. I wish someone would figure out which one was better for me. I wouldn't have to do any research, and with finals next week, I have been doing way too much of that. Already on it. Let's roll the package. If you're a music lover, Spotify and Pandora are both services worth using. But if you're considering upgrading to paid tiers, are you getting your money's worth? This is a comparison between Spotify and Pandora. Music Catalog. In the subject of content, Spotify owns tens of millions of songs. Having specific covers and remixes you won't find in Pandora. As for Pandora, Pandora offers two million songs by many famous and award-winning artists. But if you're looking for independent or small-time artists, you'll be hard-pressed to find many songs not backed by a record label. This creates a lot of similarity between multiple stations. The winner for the category of music catalog, Spotify. Social features. Spotify users have the ability to share individual songs, entire playlists, and even specific artists in Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, Skype, and Tumblr. You can even scan a barcode to a song. The platform allows users to collaborate on playlists or just make it public for anyone to follow. Whereas Pandora users have the ability to share their favorite stations across Facebook and Twitter. But because the playback is locked with a paywall, it doesn't really work. The winner of this category? Spotify. Music Discovery. Spotify uses a playlist called Discover Weekly that updates with 30 new songs every Monday. It blends music that you like with music that you might like. Spotify also has new songs in their homepage and hundreds of playlists. Pandora, on the other hand, uses an engine that offers the ability to provide listeners with songs they like based on a vast amount of variables. It creates new radio stations, and it helps to fill up playlists by automatically adding new music once you have selected a few songs. The winner of this category, Pandora. Cost. While they both offer a family plan that costs $15, Spotify has a monthly charge of $10, while Pandora comes in at half the cost at only $5 a month. The winner of the cost department, Pandora. In the end, Spotify wins two titles in social features and music catalog, but Pandora ties with two wins of their own in cost and music discovery. Which one is better? You decide. It's almost time for the last package of the semester, but don't worry. We'll be back to give you more of the Campus Edge. That's right. This episode may almost be over, but we'll always be here for you on BCTV Channel 20. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Here we go, another day, another early start with lots of stops and goes. But today is one day closer to working normal hours, earning more money, paying off bills, and making my girls proud. I can do this. Today might be tough, but tomorrow will be better. At Butler Community College, your tomorrow is closer than you think. Enroll today for spring classes. Butler Community College, let's take tomorrow. With graduation right around the corner, we will be losing a huge part of our staff here at the Campus Edge. You're right, G. Four of our very own will be leaving us all too soon. But it's important to look to the future to see what it holds. That's why we took the liberty to talk to our Campus Edge seniors to find out what they will be doing after graduation. Hi, I'm Campus Edge reporter Kyle Phillips, and there's one thing on a lot of students' minds right now, and that's graduation. And here at the Campus Edge, it is no different, where we have four of our very own reporters graduating this year. Let's go find out what we're all doing after this semester. My name is Zeb Campbell. I am in the Mass Communication Program here at Butler Community College in RTVF, that's Radio, Television, and Film. Uh, I've done a bunch here at Butler. I've won numerous Kansas Association of Broadcasters awards, including a uh, international award for my morning show here on 88.1 The Grizz. 
Um, with that, I have been working at Intercom Communications for the past two years, and uh, I have just now been uh, offered a night shift on two separate stations out there in Wichita on Power 93.5 and 105.3 The Buzz, and I'll be starting that on May 9th. My name is Zachary Schwarzenberger. Uh, I am a student here. I've, I'm about to graduate, you know. I'm also in the uh, RTV program. It's pretty good. I've enjoyed my time here. It's taught me a lot of stuff. Um, as for afterwards, I'm not quite sure yet, but I do have some classes to finish up, so I've, I've got some time to figure out what I want to do and how I'm going to continue the rest of my life. But I'm glad that I came here, and uh, it really has taught me a lot. I'm Naomi Potter. I'm a radio TV major here at Butler, and I'm not going to graduate this semester. I'm actually going to take some online classes in the summer, just finish everything up. I'm going to move over back to Ohio with my family, and I'm hoping that having this degree will look good on a resume so I can get a job maybe writing scripts or screenwriting for films, films and TV. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyle Phillips. I'm a student here at Butler Community College in the RTVF program, so radio, television, and film. I've also been the uh, director and executive producer of our magazine show, The Campus Edge, for the last two years, writing scripts and, well, directing the actual show itself. And after Butler, I plan to uh, go bum off my parents for a year or two, you know, sit in their basement, save up money, and my goal is to eventually move to Austin, Texas to uh, work on independent and short film production. From BC TV Channel 20, I'm Kyle Phillips, signing off. And that's that for the Campus Edge this semester. I can't believe that we're done. It all went by too fast. It did, but we had a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the next year. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go have an anxiety attack thinking about my finals next week. If you want to see this episode again, tune in weekdays at 11 a.m. or see previous shows at 6.30 p.m. on BC TV Channel 20. Or you can check them all out on our YouTube channel, Butler Student Media. And this has been The, the Campus, Campus Edge. Edge.